Everybody ready? Come on, let's go. Hey, yo, what's up? Welcome to the Rick Thorne Show. On this episode, I got BMX legend, icon, king of the skate parks, Mr. Eddie Fiola. I'm so excited for this interview. I remember looking up to Eddie as a kid. He was all over my wall. He inspired me to be the bike rider I am today. I'm so honored to do this interview. Let's do this. Holy cow, Eddie Fiola, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm here hanging out with, uh, with you. Dude, never ever in my wildest dreams I've been 15 been like, yo, Eddie, one day I'll be Zooming him. <laughs> I'm going to do an interview with this guy. What's up, dude? What have you been up to? Uh, doing some stunt work. Uh, just got done working on um, Perry Mason. And uh, they, they, it's, the Perry Mason is set in 1920s sometime. And, and we're a bunch of immigrants and they're, uh, the, the police are coming in and they're hitting us with batons and they got the paddy wagons out and the, they're setting our, our, uh, our apartments on fire and we're smoke and it was, you know, a night shot and it went well. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> Dude. So you got it. You got into stunts. Uh, was that after the movie rad? Was that something where you're like, maybe I could start doing stunts or was that something you want to do? Yeah. Before yeah. So definitely after the movie rad, um, I saw that it was, you know, something in my realm that I could, I could understand. And, and a lot of the times when I, when I got hired in the, you know, Hollywood, they would use me as, you know, a bicycle rider and I do bicycle stuff. And, um, until I, I worked on a movie, uh, independence day and I was in the right place at the right time. And, and they needed some in my height and size to launch over a car. So uh, that was my first non BMX stunt that I got to do. So, so and, and being like a bike rider, cause I've kind of felt that way. Well, what I'm getting ready to say is I felt, I felt the same way maybe as you have, as you don't want to always just be titled in the bike riding category. You got to go right. Your pigeonhole. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was probably rad for you then to be like, all right, I'm on my way to do bigger and better things, not right. bigger and better, but you know, more well, things. I mean, believe me, if, it, if there was a movie that always had BMX in it, then that's that's where I want to be. But not every movie has BMX in it and, and uh, or bicycle riding or anything like that. So uh, I had to widen my my skill level. So now I, you know, I drive cars, I ride motorcycles, I can drive boats and do different things. And I scuba certified and, and all this stuff that that um, has, you know, given me opportunities in the the stunt industry so that's awesome do you think do you think that being a pro bike rider and learning what it takes to be that helped with being able to be a stump some man i think riding a bike definitely has more you have more skill level than a lot of other people that are in the stunt business i think sure there are fighters and it takes years to fight but you can fake a fight you can't fake riding a bike you can't yeah. <laughs> You know, especially with the skill levels that we have, um, you can't fake it. Uh, no. and, and, and I think also riding motocross, watching these guys ride moto and, and that I ride also, you can look at a jump. And, and also in the BMX, you can look at a jump and know how much speed you need. And without hitting it one time, just looking at it, knowing this is how far I need and this is how fast I need to go. And this is where I'm going to land. And so I think we have a little edge on people who don't either ride motorcycles or ride bicycles. So Ab absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can trick BMX. You can trick it a little bit. If you uh, <laughs> get, get low with the GoPro and you're like, and you're in your fifties, you can make that one foot air look like a six foot. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. GoPro gave me another five years of my career. Thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what was it like back in the, uh, in the day, dude, I, I mean, I just found a VHS tape that I recorded off TV and it was, it's a trip. I went, I watched it. It was like half of it was racing. And then there was some, like some, some freestyle. And then it had King of the skate parks right after it. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember that being on TV? Um, I've never really seen it on TV other than VHS tapes. Um, the only, the only time I ever saw BMX on a big screen or TV was literally, you know, the movie rad. Um, and then, you know, uh, you know, GTV came out with their videos and, um, you know, we did, uh, you know, uh, uh, Matt did his videos and, and Eddie Roman and all those guys. So, but, uh, to see, I didn't really see BMX 
in, on the big screen other than other than rad. So got it. Yeah, I was I was a kid uh, in Missouri and I recorded this on uh, maybe it was like this is before cable. I don't even think we had cable yet or maybe we did. But it was like, I don't know, local local station or whatever. And so I found the tape, dude. It's sick. It has the it has the 84 King of the Skate Parks finals. I'm like, Whoa. all right. Yeah, right. dude. And and I wanted to ask you, like, what was it just for some history? Because I know a lot of a lot of people out there watch, you know, my show and their old school BMXers, too. And I think a lot of curiosity is, is like, what was it like back then? Like, what was it? You guys were the first, you know, <clears throat> right. There wasn't anybody before us. We didn't we weren't able to learn from anybody else. I mean, uh, the magazines, the photos were us and we were doing it. There wasn't videos and there wasn't anybody that we learned from, um, you know, the the very beginning, like, like Bob Harlow's flatland stuff and his quarter pipe stuff. But when we got into the skate parks, nobody was doing five foot airs. Nobody was doing eight foot airs. Nobody was doing 10 foot airs for sure. And then to do stuff like that in a bowl that, you know, nobody's done eight or 10 out of it ever before us. So, yeah, um, that's sick, know, dude. And then also, you know, I, I, we felt like superstars and our rock stars and, and being in the uniforms and being sponsored and then being in the magazines and everybody knowing who you are. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, a highlight of my life. What, what, what was it like for you? Like when you, okay. How, how did you get involved with riding? I mean, you know, cause at that time everything was in Southern California. So was, uh, did you just ride by the park one day and be like, dude, I want to do that? Or was the park there first? Or did you ride first? You know what I mean? So the skate park was there first and they weren't letting any BMXers ride. Um, skateboarding was on its decline. They were slowing down and, and one or two skateboarders were in the park and, and they weren't making any money. And we begged and pleaded with these skate park owners that let us ride. We'll pay to ride. I mean, we're not going to destroy the park. Just let us have fun. And they, they let a couple guys in and, and they figured out that we would bring more people in and we started paying and, and riding the parks. Um, so after riding the park, uh, a skateboarder came to me. Uh, I can't remember. His, his name's Rusty. And he knew this lady that was doing shows and her name was Gail Webb. Um, yeah. And she was doing these extreme shows. She had, roller skaters you know and skateboarders and they she had a bmx rider at one time uh, his name is fred becker so fred was one of her first bmx riders um and also freddie de soto who is now a skateboarder um an old school skateboarder anyhow um this guy rusty he came up to me and said hey this lady is looking for you know, more riders to ride her ramp and she'll pay you and feed you. All right. Wait, wait, hey, are you, hey. you're going to, you're going to pay me to ride your ramp all day long and feed me all day. Yeah. Let's go. So, let's go. So, so anyhow, started doing shows for Gail. Um, after doing shows for Gail, uh, I, I got a couple pictures in the magazines from riding Lakewood skate park. Um, and then I got approached by uh, Jeff Botima and he handed me a pair of forks, the very first bicycle part that somebody gave me You know, everything else was either hard work or traded somebody for, you know, bike parts and this and that. And, and uh, I felt sponsored at that point in time that somebody's giving me a bike part and that's, you know, so a, a co-sponsorship of some sort. So. Awesome. So yeah. did, did you, yeah, that's a good feeling, man. Even getting free product. You're like, what? <laughs> um, what, so you learned how to do airs at pipeline. Did you know, did you already know how to do an air on a quarter pipe or was that, that was all new to you? Everything was there. Well, we were doing airs at Lakewood and Lakewood skate park was this long half pipe and, and a half pipe. There's no flat bottom. It was okay. just a long straight. So when we rolled in, we rolled in from the left side, rolled into the right, so this is why I've done, I do airs on both sides. So you can go both sides because it wasn't, you didn't do circles, right? right? You, you did lefts and rights and then you ended up at the bottom of the bowl. So we were doing, you know, two, four, maybe five feet out. And eventually, um, you know, Bob Morales came around 
started the um, ASPA, which is the American Skate Park Association. And then from there, turned into King of the Skate Parks. And uh, speaking of King of the Sp- Skate Parks, I've got a book. Yeah, no, I'm going to get to that book. I'm gonna, <laughs> no, we're going to talk about I, I, that. Was, that's on my list. You hold that thought right there. Was King of the Skate Parks before? Wait, wait, let me, let me stop for a second because I got all these questions. For, yeah. my own, for my own knowledge and curiosity, growing up as a kid and always being, you know, just so being a Midwest kid, so infatuated with California lifestyle and what you guys were doing. What year was that you started doing airs at Lakewood? Uh, I'm going to say 1982, 83, somewhere around there. Um, 1980 was um, my first cover or not my first picture inside uh, bicycle motocross action. And you were doing an air. I was doing a tabletop um, over a hip and then uh, later on that year, I think in 82, I got my second pick, not, it was earlier than that, in the 80s, where um, I am doing an air. What was, what was the scene like back then? Uh, nobody else was doing it. I mean, it was just a bunch of guys coming out. And, you know, we had, uh, and skateboarders that didn't have big names at this time, you know, Tony Hawk, uh, uh, Neil Blender, um, Lance Mountain, all these guys were hanging out at the park, just skating the, the Lakewood skate park. And, and eventually uh, skate city came around. So I went from Lakewood to skate city to pipeline. So got it. And so did you ever run across uh, a guy, uh, Jeff Watson? Did you ever see him out there? So I never crossed paths with Jeff other than the very first contest that we did in at uh, Moose ranch, um, oh. Colton skate park. Right. And, this, the, the competition was weird because they had actually stuck cones on the side of the half pipe and you would roll around the outside of the cone like a slalom course, but you go around the cones. And I thought that was weird because I was already doing some type of aerial, you know, and right. they just wanted you to go around the cone. So weird. We're yeah. trying to figure, trying to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's crazy. And was King of the Skate Parks? I've always, I was always curious about this. Was King of the Skate Parks before AFA? Was no, that the first or was AFA? Were they together? They were together. They were together. Definitely together. Bob Morales uh, made the King of the Skate Parks a contest and in, invented the KOS. So. Got it. Okay. So, the, so was there already AFA contests before King of the Skate Parks? Yes, there were okay. AFA competitions and then, you know, ground. So the whole thing is, is that, you know, the AFA and, and King of the Skate Parks, all of that was, you know, we did everything. We did flatland, we did ramps, we did, you know, street and it was all, you know, judged on one thing. And right. then it got, then it got categorized into, Oh, you're a skate park rider. Oh, you're a dirt rider. You're a street rider. You're a flatlander. So oh, you mean, yeah, like more like today. Yeah. More like today. It's like that. Yeah. All the old school guys were more overall. That's how we were. I mean, I, yeah. you, you know, as you know, I grew up with Dennis. So, you know, Dennis was always a motivator and we always wrote, we wrote everything because you guys, yeah, yeah. You, Dennis, um, uh, what was it? Uh, um, you're a couple guys. Um, Mal and Turno was from the Midwest. They yeah. did everything. Yeah. You know, a lot. That was just the way we did it. Every, I mean, all, actually, all of us that rode were that way. And we rode we, one bike that did everything. I know, right? It's crazy yeah. to think, like, you know, uh, that it was like that. But that's the way it was, man. Um, yeah. But you guys were the first, and so like by being the first, like, I'm gonna. I always remember you doing the the raddest one hand one footers, like, and they were opposite. And I always, I think I've done maybe two of those in my life. And for some <laughs> reason or another, I can't do that freaking trick for the life of me. But you always did it so rad. I had never seen you. You obviously, I think you were, you invented that, right? Well, I, I didn't see I anyone else ever do it, but how, you, you had to have. If you never see anybody else try it, or was it just like, right? Well, if we right. Did this, well I don't we like that? to say that I, I invented anything. I, I like to say that I got it in the magazine first. Um, you know, there, there might be somebody in the Midwest or somebody in Australia doing the exact same, the exact same thing, exact same time. So, inventing or first but i can say that i was the first to get it in the magazine 
Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's where I saw you guys, man. And that's why I was asking about the AFA, like it was before the King of the Skate Parks, because I remember getting a magazine and the first coverage that I had seen was Pipeline and it was you and it was, it was Blyther. It was like, there's just a few of you guys. What was that like? How did you guys all meet through the skate park? Like all Blyther through the Dominguez? skate park. And what was cool is that, you know, we were all friends. It's, BMX is a great lifestyle, even in racing. Um, you know, if there was a, if you were in a race and you had a flat, the guy competing against you will hand you an inner tube. And, and the same with the skate parks. And we were, we rode more as friends than competitors. Right. And you know, somebody made it a competition. We never wanted competitions, but we, we never said, oh, I'm better than you or you're better than him or, oh, I can do this trick. It was just like, we, we pushed each other and it turned into a competition and the magazines actually made it into, you know, the magazines pushed it as um, when they stuck a, a picture up, uh, the, the, the headlines of that said, who's better, Watson or Fiola? There it starts. Yeah, I always, I always thought, like, for me, Jeff Watson, yeah, that makes sense. For me, I thought it was always a battle between you and Dominguez. And yes. I don't know, I don't know why I just felt that way. Uh, even, even with the TV show that, that I have, you know, it's in black and white too. I, I, <laughs> I, I text you a little clip of it. I don't know if I went through I it. I did. I saw it. Yes. Right. Okay. So you remember the day, obviously. And it's like, they try to create this thing, but was it, it wasn't really like that between you two. Obviously you're competing against each other, but it wasn't. Right. No, we were, we used to, uh, I used to hang out at his house. Uh, uh, his dad had a truck that I, I drove around and, and Mike was younger than I was. So in order to get places, I'd go pick up Mike and we'd go down to the, the skate park. And, and so, yeah, uh, we were friends from day one. So, and that's awesome. And so you started riding, like not wanting to be, cause there was no sponsorships. There was not, you just rode because you liked it. I, I rode because I loved it. And, and um, when the sponsorship started happening, then I was able to do something I loved to do. And it wasn't a job. It wasn't, you know, they paid me a, a, a monthly salary and I, you know, competed and I did shows and it was something I, I love to do anyhow, you know, and, and you know how it is. Yeah. You know, we, I can't imagine a better job than to get paid for something I was going to do anyhow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, but you guys back then, it was even it was even different for me because I came after you guys. And for right. me, I, I got good during like the dark ages of BMX. Like after 1988, it seemed like the sport just like crashed and like it, did. Sponsors, it, it was, and that's when I was getting good. So I was building my name when it was like no opportunity, but there were magazines already. There are, there was contests, there was structure to a degree. Right. But for you, it was different. There was none of that. So yeah. what was it like when like, I don't know who your first sponsor was. I'm assuming your, your paying, you know, big sponsor was probably GT. I could be wrong. But yeah. What would, is, is that right? So, so I, we got, we got small sponsors prior to that. So I started riding, uh, I rode for Jag at That's one right. time. Jocks right. Jag. Um, from there I went to. Wait, I got to uh, interrupt um, you. Morales Fiola. I remember those yeah. shirts. Right. So, so we rode, we rode for Jag. I rode for Jag for a little while. Rennie Roker. Um, I did some van shows. I rode for Everything Bicycles, which was um, Kuhara. I, I promoted. I went to Japan and promoted ET and, with John Hutland, who was a BMX racer, but was also a freestyler. Um, and then when I got back from Japan, Bob Morales. Uh, introduced us to the guys over at GT. And then from there, that's when we started, you know, introduce or trying to, to make a, a freestyle bike, something that would help us do what we wanted to do. Um, there was Torker who had the double top tubes, Torker, right? Yeah. Yep. And, and Bob and Bob Haro used to do the frame stands, right? And yeah. I used to like to do the X-ups, and our frame, the frame, GT gave us a frame, a race frame. And you couldn't really do an X up with front brakes because the brake caliper would get in the way. So we designed this little bend that uh, let us 
do full cross ups on that bike. So, oh yeah, as the brake would hit your hit the front of your foot, right? Is right. Well, no. So, so on the, the oh no, oh no, we clip the frame. Yeah, we clip. Yes, the, frame, the, right? the yeah. top tube, the bottom frame tube, it would hit, and and I got the idea from a red line because the red line, the the head tube would be here, and both bottom and top would come really close, and then they oh. had a small. Uh, uh, um, bracket that came underneath that went flat which okay. would let your brakes slide underneath right. and i came up with the idea and told uh richard luck gary turner i told gary turner you know how about a, a little bend here and he says well that wouldn't work it's gonna break right here it's gonna bend and i'm going i wrote a stingway a stingray for the longest time and it had a, a few bends in it and i never bent a stingray so he says, I'll make it. You try it. Not my fault, but we'll see how it goes. And that's when the performer was, was made. So, so sick, dude. That's crazy. It was all yeah. for the, it was all for the love of the X up, bro. Yeah. That's so rad, dude. Wait, so you weren't, you weren't sponsored by GT when you did ET. No, really? Well, I didn't, I didn't work on ET, but I helped promote the, the, the bicycle. Oh, that's right. okay. Yeah, because because you said ET earlier, and I was like, was he an ET? And I was just racking yeah. my brain. And I didn't I didn't know who all the riders were. Wasn't Bob yeah. Haro an ET? Bob Haro did it. There's a couple BMX racers. Was RL an ET? No, no. Oh, it was more okay. Because you know the ET bike I bought uh, after I saw the movie. So yeah. like at all, I was already in a BMX. I saw that. I was like, dude, I'm a full BMXer now. And that's when I was just so absorbed. Yeah. Okay. So my bad. I, I didn't think you were an ET, but you said that. And I thought, wait, were you an ET? Um, but so, Please, so I wanted, I wanted to be an ET. <laughs> I mean, Hey dude, I'd be an ET right now, bro. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's do what? Let's do me, you and the sequel. Hey, another, another, and we get Escamilla in there. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. another stunt man, BMXer. Right. Right. You know, it'd be sick. Um, so, so, okay. So check it out. So you're riding Lakewood, you get to get in pipeline, you're having a good time, you're ripping it. What was it to where the, the contest, all right, we're going to do King of Skate Parks. What year was the first one? Was it 84? 84, King of the Skate Parks, I think so. Um, and then the, the thing was is that we went to different parks and it was a, a series. So you got points at this park, then you got points at this park and points at this park. And at the end of the year, whoever won the most points. I mean, like you can come in second here, but get two firsts here and you'll win the overall series and the overall right. series. You get a, a six foot tall trophy, that six foot tall trophy at the end of the year, um, depending on the next series of contests goes to net the next winner. Oh, so I see. Okay. I had, I had that trophy three, three years in a row. And then Mike had it for one year. And then, I got it back and then the king of the skate parks was over. So, so how many years was did that go for? I, for I, it's six years. Awesome. Six years. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Six years. That's that's pretty rad. Uh that it went that long, you know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, I mean, I remember AF well, AFA still went a little bit longer than that, though, didn't it? Right. Yeah. Because I competed my first AFA contest in 86. Okay. I think it was Tulsa. I drove to Tulsa. So anyways, but yeah, those, those contests, man, uh, those were amazing. Um, as far as like, just, I don't know, just motivating everybody and like Blyther, you're still friends with everybody though, right? I mean, oh yeah. Cool. No friends with pretty much everybody in the BMX world. There's a couple of people I don't get along with. Don't we all, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about your book, bro. Let me see the book again. So Sick. when I was king, when I was king, you still are, bro. King always. Hey, hey, I know, but I mean, it, it's it's just a book that that um, you know, the back, the front, the front, the back, yeah. the side. Anyhow, um, uh, I take people, it's got a lot of photos in there, right? It's it's got some photos that nobody's ever seen. Um, they were uh, donated from uh, BMX Plus. Um, high torque publications and and I like to thank all those guys for 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 letting me have some of those and um Bill Batchelor also gave me some photos Gail Webb gave me some photos I stole some photos off the internet 
you know, but there's a bunch of bunch, bunch of stuff. But it's a it's not a pictorial book. It, it's you know my my upbringing and and where I am today. And and there's a lot of stuff that I missed out and forgot about. And and you know, hitting your head so many times. I can't remember all the dates in the world. Um, but you know, I I mentioned some stuff um, about my first tour with GT and um, the first competition and how I got in the magazines. And so it's, it's a good book. Um, and so it talks somebody, about your child, childhood. Yes. So what was funny is that, you know, everyone said, Hey, you need to come out with a book. You need to do a movie. You need to come out with a book. You need to, and I'm just blowing it off, blowing it off. And, and this one guy got a hold of me, his name's Billy Henrinkle. So Billy gets a hold of me and says, Hey man, you probably don't remember me, but, but I was a kid in the Midwest that, um, you guys came out and did a show and you threw out some grips and I got one of those grips. I have it today. He still has the grips. Whoa. And, I bet you they're yeah, Oakley grips, aren't they? Oakley. Grips. I don't know what they were, but he still has them. And he says, Hey, I, I'm in the, um, the writing business and, and I do books and, you know, and I think he, he usually does books that, that he talks about somebody else and um, like a memorial, uh, not a memorial, um, um, memoirs, right? So like a memoir of somebody's life. Um, and he says he, he'd like to put his name on a book that he's writing. And he, he says, I'd love to do it on something that I had passion about. And so he contacted me and we interviewed and we talked and, and he watched, uh, you know, uh, uh, podcasts and, and read interviews. And, and I said, find questions that nobody's asked. So, so here, yeah. So, <laughs> so there's, so there's a lot of stuff people learn even more about you in the book. Yeah. 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 What, what you were a California? Where, where did you grow up? What city did you grow up? So Long Beach was where I grew up. Bellflower is my hometown, um, but riding around Long Beach and and Lakewood, and uh, we'd ride down to the beach to where Huntington Beach and hang out and just everywhere. But we rode our bikes everywhere when we were kids. That was our freedom, our bikes. As soon as we got home from school or got done with homework. We got on our bikes and rode, and, and our parents never saw us until the streetlights came on. So yeah, that's how we were too, dude. That people ask <laughs> me all the time, like, "Hey, how'd you get into riding?" And nowadays it's different, obviously, because you know it's just it's uh it's it's a thing. We already know about it. It's it's right. It's, you guys were you know even earlier, but I say that all the time. I was like, I just like riding down the street, dude, just hanging out with my friends, and one sure. led to another, you know. And uh, you know, I, I I had what I was trying to make the point earlier is that I had a goal to be a pro BMXer. I had a goal because I could see it. I could see this contest series. I could see you and Blyther and Dominguez, everybody shredding, Hugo Gonzalez, you know what I mean? Just ripping it up. Oh, and there's bike sponsors and there's like, there's a, you know, and then, and then when your best friend's Dennis McCoy, you're like, oh man. So I had a goal. Yours is a whole nother story where it's so much more organic that like, you know, uh, uh, that you just kind of fell into place. Like, oh, I'm going to start riding. I'm riding. Oh, this looks cool to do. Right. Do well, and, you know, this, when I was doing it, my goal was to be the entertainer. You know, we mm. did shows. We did more shows than competitions. Obviously, and we just yeah. entertained people. And, you know, doing some of the Gail Webb shows, we would go to um, malls across America and, and we would have her half pipe inside the mall and just having crowds, you, you know, on the top of the store, you know, second, second story, looking down upon the ramp and you're doing airs near them. And, and so, you know, rad. so it, rad. it was, it was cool. And, and again, uh, her half pipe was a true half pipe, um, which was, you know, no flat bottom, uh, 10 feet tall, uh, 10 feet wide. It was, it was, you know, incredible plexiglass, and uh no flat know, bottom probably right no flat bottom and barely any platform awesome so awesome that's badass um sorry i this thing's popping up here hold on give me one second <laughs> it's like you have 10 minutes left in your interview 
Uh, all right, which is about right anyways, because I keep it about an hour or 45 minutes. So we'll be good. We'll be perfect. So I don't like to do long podcasts because I look at it like for how I would want to listen to something. I like to get to know somebody within 45 minutes or so because I don't want to sit for two hours and watch somebody. You know what I mean? So that's kind of- Yeah, no, I, I get it. No, I'm <laughs> always busy running around. You know what I mean? Um, but any, anyhow, Gail Webb is awesome. I wanted to ask you, what do you prefer more- because AFA was more wedge ramps and quarter pipes, right? And then it wasn't until King of the Skate Parks was more like a, a half pipe because you had a half pipe vibe, Del Mar and these different, you know. Right. The AFA was totally different until uh, King of Vert came out. And so what do you like better, half pipe or quarter pipe? Um, I'm going to say half pipe. Half pipe, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, is that, you know, when you go to a half pipe, usually all the half pipes are all built the same way or if you're king of the skate parks you know the the ramps aren't going to change they're not going to deteriorate they're not going to move or or change vert you know where yep. or you know when we rode the afa competitions you know we would have you know the gt ramp which would be this and then you'd ride uh wilkerson ramp which would be this yeah you know so inconsistency for sure inconsistency but that's what made us professionals is that we rode anything that we got handed. We, when we went on tour and we did the world tour, trying to explain to somebody that what a quarter pipe was, didn't understand. Yeah. You know, no. when you yeah. say, Hey, just goes to vert and it shows up and there's four feet of vert. <laughs> I guess we're going to ride it. Yeah. No, dude, those are the worst. Like, especially like if you're running late, like, come on, we got to get to the venue. Everybody's there We're waiting to do this show. Like, I'm putting my bike together when I get there in front of like a few hundred people, 500 people, whatever. And then you look at the ramp, be like, really, dude? Yeah. <laughs> and, they're, and, they're, and they're like sitting there going like, let's see it, bro. And you're like, dude, come on. Can I at least warm up a little bit? Nope. No. Nope. Time to roll. It's time to roll. Oh, you're, and you show up on cobblestone or, <laughs> or, it's, or it's slightly sprinkling outside. And they've got the smoothest ramps out that you going, Oh, I know it's going to happen. Yeah, for, absolutely. Where, where can somebody get your book? So is it, it, is it out yet? Is it out? It, it is not out yet. We have it on an Indiegogo. So you can look up Eddie Fiola Indiegogo. Um, it's going to be available at uh, rad designs, 1986. Um, and uh, Billy Henry gold myself put this thing together and uh Kid Fruman and his wife, Mindy Fruman, um, they also helped in, in, in building this book. And uh, we're, it, it's, you know, we are going to see how it goes. I mean, yeah, I think it'll do good. You got yeah. a lot of solid fans. You got a lot of li lifelong fans, including me. Uh, a lot of, you know, you motivated a lot of us to, uh, you know, to be where I'm at today. You know, you, it's like yeah. I say that all the time to, to people. They're like, kids rip it up because they see it. And they see like what's possible and they see what, you know, nowadays people can create their own image and brand on Instagram and get sponsored. You know what I mean? Right. You don't have to right. do the King of Vert grind or the King of Skate Parks grind and all the shows and, you know, it's, it's different, but it's okay. But you, yeah. you guys laid the foundation. Uh, I, man, if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know if I'd be riding or not. You know, I wouldn't have seen that stuff in the magazines and been like, whoa, I might've missed, missed the boat on that one, you know? So thank <laughs> you. I'm for real, dude. I'm, it's crazy. I just, when I saw that King of the Skate Parks on TV in 84, it changed my life. It was like rad. So yeah, dude, it's, it's totally rad. Do you, do you have any, uh, any other things that you got going on? Like, I guess you don't really know what the stunt world stuff just kind of pops up, right? Yeah. Things just pop up every once in a while. You know, there's, there's a possibility of going, you know, back East and, and working out there in, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and then I've got, a couple guys out here that were doing stuff. I, I worked on uh, Jackass Four. Uh, not that's you know, right. I was going to ask you about that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Jackass. How was Jackass that? Jackass Four. Uh, you know what's funny is that you know they they also had brought one of the directors is is Spike Jones. Yep. Right. So Spike comes, you know, and he's he's he was this little grommet kid that was getting us pizza at, at one of the shows. And, and to see him being a director, a producer, and, and uh, of major films, it, it, it's just funny. And, and uh, It's amazing. You know, but I'm just another guy that rides a bike, and I love riding my bike. And, and just so happens that, you know, there are these guys of jackass that actually know who I am and what I've done. 
and they're coming up to me and asking me for autographs or asking me for a picture. And I'm going, I'm just another guy riding a bike, but yeah, yeah but sure. all the, uh, you know, the majority of those guys are from the BMX world. I know Tremaine yeah. was, I know, I know yeah. Spike was, uh, you know, um, uh, Spike, yeah. Spike started in BMX and, uh, you know, yeah. really always a proud thing to say, I guess, from the BMX community is like, wow, look how far he's gotten. He's amazing. Sure. He's super creative. So that's cool. He included you in on that. That's, that's pretty badass. Yeah. Spike did, right? Spike wanted yeah. you there. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you're not, but the thing is, you're not just another bike rider, Eddie. You've like, you've really motivated a lot of people and you're still an inspiration and you're still going and you're still doing cool stuff. Still playing, so, still riding, still having fun, you know? Yeah, man. Well, yeah. I, I I, I told somebody this the other day is that I've done, I've done a lot of stuff in my life and that if I, I died tomorrow, I'd be completely happy about it because I, I've, I, I've met people and I've, I feel fulfilled everything that I think I wanted to do. And so everything that I'm doing now is just icing on the cake. Yeah. I feel the same way. I would just want to do one more toe up foot plant. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, where can somebody follow you on Instagram and your website? Can you drop it right now so they can follow you? Eddie Fiola, uh, you know, um, that's Facebook, Instagram, just Eddie Fiola. I don't know if there's a hashtag or not, but whatever that is. So just at Eddie Fiola and that's F-I-O-L-A, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then you got EddieFiola.com. Uh, I don't. Somebody else owns that. <laughs> hey, man. What's up? Yeah, there's only, there's I, only one king of the skate parks in this world. And that's you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so man. it well, is anyways, what it is. So, so people could get in touch with what you're doing and what you got going on. And obviously anybody out there, order your book for sure. Like that's where people can get, you know, to, to order your book, right? Yes. You got links yes, to that? Yeah. In, Indiegogo, uh, I'll leave a, a link on, on the Eddie Fiola instagram page and the facebook page and all that other stuff so and, and like i said uh rad designs 1986 also has all the the books and t-shirts and swag that if anybody else wants that so awesome well cool eddie dude i'm so stoked to talk to you thanks a lot for uh taking time i'm super honored and much love bro seriously hey well thank you so much i want to thank my wife for uh letting me play and and be the guy that i am and and do the things that i do so if it wasn't for her um i also she also is the one that that makes sure that i don't spend the money stupidly so yeah well that's good to have in your life the support yeah dude. you're stoked you're stoked well you got my support as well and i'm sure you know thousands of other old school bmxers out there they're gonna love this interview i appreciate you taking the time very cool well, let me know when it goes i'll, I'll send it to you stay rad bro you got it. Thanks. Talk Bye. to you. Bye. Bye.